I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. The salty breeze off the coast of Key West was intoxicating. For five friends, Mark, Sarah, Jake, Lisa, and Ben, a deep sea fishing trip was the perfect escape from their busy lives. They had chartered a sturdy fishing boat, the Sea Venture, captained by an experienced seaman named Bill. The day started perfectly. The sun shone brightly in a cloudless sky, and the sea was calm. They were miles offshore, in the deep blue waters of the Gulf of Mexico, casting their lines and sharing laughs. The boat rocked gently, and the only sounds were the calls of seabirds and the splashing of waves. Around noon, they hooked a massive marlin. The fight to reel it in was exhilarating, with Mark and Jake taking turns battling the giant fish. They finally landed it, celebrating their victory with high fives and laughter. The catch seemed to be the highlight of the trip, and they decided to stay out a bit longer, hoping for more luck. As the afternoon wore on, dark clouds began to gather on the horizon. Captain Bill kept a wary eye on the weather, but the group was too caught up in their adventure to notice. By the time they realized the storm was upon them, it was too late. The sea turned violent, with towering waves crashing against the boat. The wind howled, and rain lashed down, reducing visibility to almost nothing. Captain Bill tried to steer them back to shore, but the storm was relentless. Suddenly, there was a loud crack, and the boat shuddered violently. We've hit something, Bill shouted. We've got to abandon ship. Panic set in as the boat began to take on water. Bill grabbed life jackets and threw them to the others, instructing them to put them on and get into the life raft. The sea venture was sinking fast, and they had no time to waste. The group scrambled to get into the life raft, the waves tossing them around like rag dolls. As they pushed off from the sinking boat, they watched in horror as the sea venture disappeared beneath the waves. The storm raged on, and the life raft was tossed about in the churning sea. Hours passed and the storm finally began to abate, leaving them adrift in the vast, empty ocean. The sun set, and darkness enveloped them, bringing a bone-chilling cold. They huddled together for warmth, their minds racing with fear and uncertainty. The storm had left them disoriented, and they had no idea how far they were from land. Exhausted and terrified, they finally drifted off to a fitful sleep. The next morning, they awoke to a calm sea and a clear sky. The sun was a welcome sight, but their relief was short-lived. They were surrounded by endless water with no land in sight. Their supplies were limited to a few bottles of water and some snacks they had managed to grab before abandoning ship. We need to stay calm and conserve our energy, Bill said, trying to keep their spirits up. We'll be found soon. Hours turned into days and their hope began to fade. The heat of the sun was relentless and their water supply dwindled. Dehydration and hunger set in, sapping their strength and morale. On the third day, they noticed something moving in the water. At first, they thought it might be a ship, and their hearts leapt with hope. But as it drew closer, they realized with growing horror that it was a fin, multiple fins, circling their raft. Sharks, Bill said grimly. Stay still and don't make any sudden movements. The sharks circled closer, their sleek bodies gliding effortlessly through the water. The group huddled together, trying to remain calm, but the tension was palpable. Suddenly, one of the sharks bumped the raft, causing it to rock violently. Lisa screamed, and the others tried to calm her down. But the sharks seemed to sense their fear, and their movements became more aggressive. We need to scare them off, Jake said, his voice shaking. We can't just sit here and wait to be eaten. We don't have any weapons, Mark replied, his eyes wide with fear. What are we supposed to do? Bill looked around the raft, his mind racing. We have to use what we have, he said. Splash the water, make noise. Maybe we can drive them away. They began splashing the water with their hands and feet, shouting and trying to make as much noise as possible. The sharks circled faster, their fins cutting through the water with terrifying precision. One of the sharks lunged at the raft, its massive jaws snapping just inches from Mark's leg. He kicked at it desperately, and the shark retreated, only to circle back for another attack. We need to get out of the water, Sarah said, her voice trembling. They're going to tip us over. Bill nodded, 
his face set with determination. We'll have to take turns keeping watch and trying to keep them at bay. Everyone, hold on tight. They took shifts, each person standing guard while the others tried to rest. The shark's relentless circling made it nearly impossible to relax, and the hours dragged on in a blur of fear and exhaustion. On the fifth day, their situation grew even more dire. Their water supply was gone, and they were weak from hunger and dehydration. The sharks continued their assault, their behavior growing more aggressive as the hours passed. Just as hope seemed lost, they spotted a distant shape on the horizon. It was a ship slowly making its way towards them. The sight reignited their spirits, and they began waving frantically, shouting for help. The ship drew closer, and the crew on board spotted the life raft. They lowered a rescue boat and sped towards them, the sight of salvation bringing tears to their eyes. As the rescue boat approached, the sharks made one final desperate attack. One of the sharks lunged at the raft, its jaws snapping shut on Ben's arm. He screamed in agony as the shark dragged him into the water. Ben, no, Mark shouted, reaching out to grab him, but it was too late. The water turned red with blood as the sharks converged on their prey. <laughs> the rescue crew arrived just in time to pull the others from the raft, their faces pale with shock and horror. They watched helplessly as the sharks devoured Ben, his screams echoing in their ears. Safely on board the rescue ship, the survivors were given water and medical attention. They huddled together, their bodies trembling with exhaustion and grief. The reality of their ordeal began to sink in, and the weight of their loss was almost too much to bear. As the ship sailed toward shore, Mark, Sarah, Jake, Lisa, and Bill looked out at the vast ocean, the memories of their harrowing experience forever etched into their minds. They had survived, but the trauma of their ordeal would haunt them for the rest of their lives. The story of their deep-sea fishing trip turned nightmare spread quickly, a chilling reminder of the dangers that lurked beneath the surface of the seemingly serene ocean. And though they had escaped the jaws of death, the scars of their encounter with the relentless predators of the deep would never truly heal. The survivors' return to Key West was met with a mixture of relief and somber silence. They were rushed to the hospital, their bodies weak and minds shattered. The physical wounds healed faster than the emotional ones, but the ordeal was far from over. The horror of watching Ben torn apart by sharks had left a deep psychological scar. Mark, Sarah, Jake, Lisa, and Bill were interviewed by local authorities and the Coast Guard, their testimonies forming a grim account of their harrowing experience. News outlets quickly picked up the story, and soon the whole nation knew of the Sea Ventures' tragic fate. The survivors hoped that their nightmare was over, but fate had other plans. A few weeks after their return, Mark began experiencing vivid nightmares. He would wake up in a cold sweat, the sound of Ben's screams echoing in his mind. Sarah found herself unable to sleep, haunted by the sight of the sharks circling their raft. Jake and Lisa withdrew from their friends and family, the trauma pushing them into isolation. Bill, the experienced captain, struggled with guilt and nightmares of his own. One evening, as they gathered for a support group session arranged by the local trauma center, Mark suggested they meet at his apartment for dinner. He hoped that being together would help them cope. They all agreed, desperate for any sense of normalcy. As night fell, the group convened at Mark's place. They talked and shared a meal, trying to find comfort in each other's company. For a brief moment, it seemed as though they might start to heal. Suddenly, the lights flickered, and the temperature in the room dropped noticeably. An uneasy feeling settled over them. The atmosphere became heavy, and an unexplainable dread filled the air. What's happening? Lisa whispered, her voice trembling. Before anyone could answer, the lights went out, plunging the room into darkness. They heard a low, guttural growl that seemed to emanate from the walls themselves. Mark grabbed a flashlight from a drawer and turned it on, casting an eerie glow around the room. The growling grew louder, more menacing. It seemed to surround them, echoing off the walls. The group huddled together, their hearts pounding with fear. We need to get out of here, Jake said, his voice shaking. As they made their way to the door, the growling intensified. Suddenly, the room felt as though it was tilting, and water began to seep through the floorboards, dark and cold. The smell of salt water filled the air, and the temperature continued to drop. This isn't real, Bill said, trying to convince himself. It's just our minds playing tricks on us. But the water continued to rise, quickly reaching their ankles. 
It was icy cold, numbing their legs and sending waves of terror through their bodies. They heard splashing sounds in the water, followed by the unmistakable sight of fins cutting through the surface. The growling turned into frenzied snarls, and the water churned with unseen predators. We have to move, Mark shouted, grabbing Sarah's hand. They waded through the water, trying to reach the door, but it was stuck. Panic set in as they struggled to open it. The water rose to their knees, and the growling grew louder, more insistent. Out of the darkness, shapes began to emerge. The sharks from their nightmares, their eyes glowing with a malevolent light, circled them. The room seemed to shrink, the walls closing in as the water continued to rise. Lisa screamed as one of the sharks lunged at her, its teeth snapping just inches from her leg. Mark swung the flashlight, trying to fend it off, but the shark retreated only to circle back, more aggressive than before. We're not going to make it, Sarah sobbed, clinging to Mark. We have to try, Mark said, his voice filled with desperation. The water was now waist deep and the sharks were relentless. They attacked from all sides, their jaws snapping and tearing at their clothes and skin. The group fought back with everything they had, but it was a losing battle. Jake was the first to fall. A shark clamped down on his leg, dragging him under the water. His screams were muffled by the churning sea as the water turned crimson with his blood. Lisa tried to reach him, but another shark lunged at her, knocking her down. Mark and Sarah managed to pull her up, but she was bleeding heavily. The water continued to rise, and the sharks grew more frenzied, their eyes glowing brighter in the darkness. This can't be real, Bill muttered, his mind unable to comprehend the horror unfolding around them. Mark's flashlight flickered and went out, plunging them into complete darkness. The water was now up to their chests, and the sharks' attacks were relentless. Mark held Sarah close, their bodies trembling with fear and exhaustion. Stay together, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. We have to stay together. But the sharks had other plans. They attacked in a coordinated frenzy, their jaws snapping and tearing at flesh. One by one, the survivors were pulled under, their screams lost in the water. Mark fought with everything he had, but a shark clamped down on his arm, dragging him under. He felt the cold water filling his lungs, the darkness closing in around him. His last thought was of Ben and the horror they had faced together. The room fell silent, the water still and dark. The sharks circled lazily, their eyes no longer glowing. The nightmare had claimed its final victims, leaving nothing but silence and darkness in its wake. When the police arrived at Mark's apartment the next morning, they found the door ajar and the apartment empty. The floor was wet and a faint smell of salt water lingered in the air. There was no sign of Mark, Sarah, Jake, Lisa, or Bill. Their belongings were untouched and there were no signs of a struggle. The case remained unsolved, a chilling mystery that haunted the town of Key West. The story of the Sea Ventures survivors became a dark legend, a warning of the horrors that could lurk in the depths of the sea and the shadows of the mind. And though the friends were never seen again, their screams and the growling of the sharks continued to echo in the nightmares of those who heard their story. A reminder that some horrors could never be escaped, even in the safety of the shore. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 